when Peter had preached his sermon. We have the sermon as it's recorded there in Acts chapter 2. And then it says, with many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, be saved from this perverse generation. And he was not content simply in an impersonal and dispassionate way to give them the way of salvation. He urges them, he pleads with them, he presses it upon them, be saved from this crooked generation. And here God follows up his command to repent. He says, for why will you die? Why? Should you continue in your way and die? And this, of course, is something that we need to press upon every unbeliever. Why will you not turn to God for eternal life through Jesus Christ? Why should you die? Why should you go to hell? Why should you not be saved? God has so plainly shown us that he does not desire your death. It is in the nature of God to show mercy. He has shown mercy to others, even to the very worst of men. And God commands you to turn and to receive his mercy. And no sinner who hears the gospel of Christ, no one hearing the gospel has the right to be lost. You have no right to commit spiritual suicide by simply ignoring the message of God when it is God himself who says, why should you die? Why should you not turn and have life through Christ? Finally, let's consider briefly the message of the people, the question rather of the people, when they ask, if our transgressions and our sins lie upon us, how can we live? There is, of course, a real problem there, isn't there? If we have done these things, if God is just, how can we escape God's judgment? How can God be righteous and not punish sin? And of course, the whole of the New Testament answers that question. It tells us that God's eternal Son became man. It tells us that for us, he fulfilled all righteousness. And that on the cross, he bore the penalty of sin. He bore the curse of sins that he did not commit in order that we might inherit the blessing of a righteous life that we have not lived. And you see, in and through Jesus Christ, God has found a way by which he might be just and the justifier of the one who believes in Jesus. Because my sinless Saviour died, my guilty soul is counted free, and God the just is satisfied to look on him and pardon me. And God commands the whole world. God commands all men everywhere to repent and to come to Jesus Christ and to have life in him. What do we learn from this passage? First of all, let us learn not to limit our Bible reading to the easy parts of scripture. Let us be prepared to dig in to books like Ezekiel and Revelation and other portions of God's word. 
and let's learn to concentrate on what is straightforward and plain. What we have been looking at this morning, although it occurs in this difficult book, yet what we've been looking at is plain and straightforward and easy to understand. God takes no pleasure in the death of the sinner. Let's be reminded of our personal responsibility. When the watchman blew the trumpet, it was the responsibility of each and every person to take notice. God has spoken to us. It is our personal responsibility to listen and to obey God's word. And let us learn the lesson of these final verses. God is holy. God is just. And yet, he takes no pleasure in condemning the sinner. He sent his son to die for sin. And in the gospel, he commands all men and women, young people and children, all, everywhere, without exception, to turn and to have life through Jesus Christ. If you are not a Christian this morning, then I appeal to you in the name of God to take away this question with you. Why? Why will you die? Why will you continue? Why will you not turn? And why will you not turn now? Why will you not seek the Lord now while he may be found and find eternal life? In Jesus Christ. Amen.